this stuff could catch on. Then why don't you drink it all? I never drink alone. <laughs> Come on, kids. Chug a lug down the hatch. Shouldn't we have a toast or something? Okay. <clears throat> to good health, to gentle understanding, and higher education. All the qualities your old man hasn't got. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Well, didn't hurt a bit, did it? I swallowed four pits. Do I need an operation? No. If anything starts sprouting, we can always feed you a weed killer. <laughs> well, there we are. Full of orange juice, bright eyes, and bushy tails. Speak for yourself. Ready to walk into the New Show Puppy School and show them how brilliant a boy can be. I know the alphabet A, B, F. G this one stays on the wraps for a while. Now, the rest of you, don't forget. Your mother was Italian. The country that gave birth to such great minds as, um, as, uh, uh... Galileo, Da Vinci, Dante, Marconi. Right. And your father was Irish. The land that gave birth to such great minds as, as, uh, um... Listen. You think it was easy to invent Irish whiskey? Daddy. Yes, Irving, my own. Aren't you going to eat your oatmeal? I've always said a day without oatmeal is like a day without sunshine. <laughs> Good? I don't know what part of Italy you're from. But there's an awful lot of Lucretia Borgia in you somewhere. Right. I think all I want is a cup of coffee and an aspirin. Sit down and eat. This may be the worst bowl of oatmeal ever cooked. Amen. And the orange juice might be full of pits. But I'll tell you one thing. Your mother would have been very proud at this moment. We're a family and we're together. And we're going to get a proper education. I think that's worth a bowl of scorched oatmeal any day, don't you? Pop? Yeah? We'll do our best. We'll do our very best in that school. If that's what you want. It's what your mother wanted. We'll work and we'll study and everything as hard as we can. But you gotta remember, we're only human. Worse than that, we're only boys. <laughs> People all exulting, while follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. Oh, heart, heart, heart. Oh, the bleeding drops of red, while on the deck my captain lies. Oh, and dead. Oh, captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bell. Rise up. Come in. Mr. Foy, I presume? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, I mean, yes, sir. I would like you to meet some of our troops on the front line. <laughs> Miss Crowden, ninth grade. Miss Roberts, eighth grade. Mrs. Hardenberg, sixth grade. Miss Williams, fifth grade. Miss Howard, fourth grade. Miss Longenbeck, third grade, and Mrs. Shakespeare, kindergarten. Each of them teaching against one foy this term. <laughs> wondering about the adornment over Mrs. Shakespeare's eye, I think she can explain it. You have a small son, Irving. An eraser? Try again. Inkwell? No. 
Apparently, your son isn't satisfied with the games we teach our children. So he brought one of his own from home. What game was that? I was wounded, Mr. Foy, when I climbed into our sandbox and attempted to disengage your little son from his pool cue. <laughs> How can I explain that to the PTA? Tell him you thought it was your shot. <laughs> Next witness, Miss Crowden. My student, Brian Foy, was discovered in the girls' locker room of our gymnasium. He claims he got lost. Well, that's probably true. He's never been in the school before. He got lost Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good record. He came to school every day. <laughs> On Friday, we had no choice. We took his binoculars away from him. Miss <laughs> Roberts. Charlie Foy. <laughs> Seven. There are always seven, Mr. Foy. A fact that wasn't discovered until your son had won nine box lunches and an apple meant for me. Well, look at it this way. He's trying to educate you. Never shoot traps with strangers. That kind of lesson could be more valuable than biology. Speaking of biology, Mr. Foy, your daughter, Madeline, has formed a glee club of her own in my classroom. Well, what's it got to do with biology? Well, the, the song she chose to teach them is a version of uh, Mademoiselle from Armentiers. <laughs> she claims to have heard you and your friends singing it one night. I got this old biology professor of mine, drops in once in a while with his case history. The way your I... daughter told it, it's more like a case in the half. <laughs> After a certain point, I, I stop counting. <laughs> I make it a point never to plead, never to beg. Never to humble myself in front of the children or their parents. But this time I am begging. Please take your seven offspring back into show business. What? Give us a fighting chance to get this school system back to normal. I want my kids to have an education. You could hire somebody to tutor them. I understand you've done it before. They wore out three tutors and a lion tamer. <laughs> Do you know our school has four times won the Scholastic Award for Educational Excellence presented by the New York State Board of Regents? This year, if we average in your seven children, we couldn't win last prize for reform schools. <laughs> We're just not equipped to cope with them. We give up, Mr. Foy. We surrender. Shoot me. I don't want them in my classrooms. Now, you listen to me for a minute. I want my kids to get the chance I never had. That's what their mother wanted. I want them to be somebody. Granny, and Charlie, Mary, and Madeline, and little Irving with his pool cue. Oh, I know I forgot somebody in there someplace, but I love them all. Even I forget their names sometimes. You're asking for help, Mr. Principal? So am I. Please, give them a break. Try to understand that the, their old man has lost them up because he was alone and didn't know any better. Stay with it. Educate them. Bryony and Charlie and Richard and Eddie, they may not be as lucky as I, I was to find a, a woman whose love was too deep for me to understand or deserve. I think it was more than an outburst. It, it was an appeal for help and sympathy. Do you want these children to remain in our school system? These terrible children? Perhaps it isn't all their fault. You know, perhaps the thing they miss most is a mother and some kindness. I don't think the new Rochelle school system is obligated to furnish them with mouse food and crap tables. Well, no. But we are obligated to supply them with a little understanding. Why is it the children who are always wrong that... What, the teachers, they're always right. I'm a little ashamed of some of the things I said. I hope I'm not alone.
Thanks, Georgie. See you in a little while, Barney. Georgie Cohan drove me up here from New York in his new car. We hit 38 miles an hour once, downhill. <laughs> Where'd you leave the speed demon? Oh, he had to take the car over to the garage. A uh, spark plug was loose in the carburetor or something. What do I know about machinery? I was nine years old before I could open a zipper. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, kids. Hi, guys. Hi, Barney. Well, 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 what act are you rehearsing? How many quarts in a gallon? That's your father's department. I never touch the stuff. <laughs> Four quarts, Eddie. And two cents back on a bottle. Pop? Yeah, Mary, what do you want? In what year did Columbus discover America? Asher and Clara. She's Italian. It was the year 1492. There's a memory for you. <laughs> she must have been younger than you at the time. Hey, what is this routine? Changing the act? Right away, it's no good. Gus Edwards does the schoolhouse bit much better. It's no act, Mr. Green. It's involuntary servitude. At your age? The old man's cast us into bondage. This nation cannot long exist, half slave and half free. Let my people go! Very funny. Everybody hit the books or I'll double the oatmeal in the morning. Well, you better pack up the books fast because I got the seven little boys booked in the Adelphi Theater in Washington, D.C. next week. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Down, everybody, down. Cancel the date. Cancel the date? I already got $400 in advance. And that's only the start. Eddie Foy and the seven little boys have got 26 weeks solid on the Keith Albee circuit. Well, you'll be so rich you'll be able to buy a couple of spare kids. I'm trying to sell them. Forget it. <laughs> Just staying home. I'm going out as a single. A single? Nobody's buying singles anymore. I'm a man of few words. What they want is something terrible so they can laugh. You got the most laughable kids in the world. <laughs> if that's Cohen, he can get right back in the horse's buggy and drive you back to New York. He can't do this to me. Oh, well, good evening, Mr. Foy. It's my teacher, Miss Williams. Well, don't ask me to apologize for my children, but we'll be here all night. You never have to apologize for your children again, Mr. Foy. Not after your speech in the principal's office today. Uh, you, uh, you made me feel a little ashamed. You should be. Eight pages of homework? Oh. <laughs> well, that's partly why I'm here. I want you all to know the whole world isn't against you. Now, I, th I thought I might be of some help with your books. How do you do? My name is Barney Green, and my job is talent. I'm a man of few words. If the bottom half of you is as nice as the top half, we can talk business. <laughs> Barney, Barney, go up in the kitchen. Leave me out of house and home. Anything. But shut up. What's the matter? If she's got legs, I can get her a job. That's all I was trying to find out. Did it ever occur to you there are some people in this world that don't want to be in show business? They're sick or something. <laughs> so, Miss Williams, hmm? I apologize for myself, oh. my friends, and my family. Uh, Oh, thank you. Also, that couch, it isn't too good a shape, either. Oh, oh it's, it's very comfortable, like all of you. Now, now, if you children have any questions... Ah, uh, yes, I have a question. Oh, yes? Are you married? Oh, I... No, no, but... I wouldn't want to wish him on any woman, and I wouldn't expect you would love him, but maybe. If you felt sorry enough for the children, you might consider... Hurry, get the oatmeal started for the morning. <laughs> Do anything to occupy your mind for a minute, but shut up. No, wait, wait, I was only... Ta-da! Where's the overture? Cohan is on, huh? When is he ever off? Yeah, the day they take me away, boy, I'll still be dancing better than you ever did. No wonder, you'll be heading downstairs. Yeah, very comedic, very funny. Well, well, children. You know what happened to me on the way here? I was waylaid by a candy store and somebody shoved into my car. Wait a minute, take your time. Charlie, don't shove. You're going to get the... Boy, don't you ever take care of your children. They're acting like Fink's meals at feeding time. All right, coin, that's enough. Come on, kids, you got to go back to work on your books. Come on, let's go. Come on. Did you say books? Yeah, I'm sending them all back to public school. Boy, what have you got against the United States of America? He wants to break up the act. He's going out as a single. A single? Why? Why not? You mean you're going out without these seven wonderful decoys? They'll get you with the first volley. Atta boy, Mr. Cohan. You tell him we don't want to be 